Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 70 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Alrighty, before we get to our main feature, I want to mention a couple of independent comic books that I am uh, backing. The first one is Seven Legions by Michael Beacon, and as this Indiegogo campaign was nearing its end uh, a few days ago, it looked like it was, you know, late in the fourth quarter, down by a couple of touchdowns, and then there was this last-minute surge, and it reached its goal. <laughs> So congratulations to Michael Beacon. It looks like a great comic about samurais and angels. Um, it is now in demand, so you can still, uh, still get a copy, but uh, get to it soon. The uh, next one I'm backing is a relatively new one. It's uh, written by Brian Starkey. It's about a cat, and it is called Russell. If you're looking for a comic book about a lovable furry feline, then you need to look elsewhere because Russell is a gun-toting, hard-drinking, hooker-loving cat. The story takes place in the Old West, and this alcoholic cat is on a mission to save the president. The campaign is still a long ways from its goal, but fortunately it has about seven weeks left. There is still plenty of time for you to back it, uh, but please do so as soon as you can you will not regret it. As always, the links to these Indiegogo campaigns will be in the description below. Alrighty, today we have another video from our friend and contributor, Mike the Bloody Red Baron. 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 <coughs> okay, cool it ladies. Alrighty, Mike is currently writing a novel called Badger, which uh, is based on a comic book that, uh, that he wrote. Uh, today he's going to be talking about the challenges involved in turning a comic book into a novel. So I'm just going to shut up and let Mike have the floor. Here with Mike. Good morning, folks. I'm writing a Badger novel. I've already written a Nexus novel, which Dark Horse will release next year. Uh, when you try to transmute comic book material into prose, it presents quite a challenge. Comic books are the most forgiving medium in the world. Uh, you can get away with scenes and characters in comic books that you can't get away with in, uh, in straight prose unless you open it up to literary devices. And by literary devices, I mean... Uh, Tricks of characterization, explanation, and philosophy. How do you keep a reader interested? Well, you use every trick in the book. Uh, what makes a, a novel fascinating? Well, it's everything. It's, it's the language. It's the rhythm of the words. It's what you're saying. It's the characterization. Uh, in the case of Badger, I'm adapting a comic book series that didn't get uh, uh, picked up. And it's about how Badger, at Mavis urging, quits working for him. He's sick of, sh of shoveling out the, uh, the stables and opens his own martial arts school, uh, Badger Kung Fu, inviting a string of interesting visitors who keep coming to challenge him. Uh, in working on this novel, I'm able to incorporate a lot of ideas that uh, you can't in a comic book because there's there's not enough room and, and comics are a medium of a few words even when they're very verbose uh, they should be a medium of few words because comic is a mixed medium and you're looking at something and of course uh, the prime directive for any storytelling is to show not to tell uh, and I'm trying to do that in the in the novel too as I've explained many times you can show not tell in straight prose as well uh, the story uh, concerns a struggle, once again, over the supremacy of wizards over the world and who's going to rule the world and what part Badger plays in that. And it also introduces a couple of new characters and brings back some old familiar ones. Uh, Wombat is going to play an important part of this. Uh, I'm storming along on this thing. 
because uh, I usually have more ideas than I can integrate smoothly into the narrative, and everything has to be smooth. If you, if you uh, 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 if one thing doesn't follow another smoothly, the reader is going to sense it and jump right out. I'm starting a Patreon account, and I will be posting chapters of the Badger novel there as I proceed. Uh, the way I'm working now, I'll probably be done with the first draft by the end of November. All right, thanks. So the Patreon account we're hoping to have up within this next month, so keep posted on Mike's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook page. And it, this is a new Badger novel that Mike is, is working on. Mm -hmm. So it's a novel, not a comic book, but it should be pretty exciting. So thanks for watching. All right, have a great day. Alrighty, thank you very much, Mike. just want to let everyone know that Mike has two new novels out. The first one is Florida Man, and the second is number six in the Biker series, this one called Bloodline. Um, I will provide links to the Amazon pages uh, for both in the description below. Okay, that music means that it is time for Hogg's Headlines, all the news that Doc Hogg wants to report on. Dateline, South Afrikan. An anonymous student at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa managed to get free meals from Kentucky Fried Chicken for a year by posing as a quality inspector from the KFC head office. According to the article, he pulled up to the KFC branches in a limo driven by a mate and flashed a fake ID card and said he was there to make quality assurance checks on the food. A staff member from one of the franchises said, when he arrived, we would all try to act our best so that we didn't piss off the man from head office. He was so convincing because he was so confident, and even colleagues from other branches of KFC know him. When he came in, he rushed to the kitchen and checked everything, taking notes and then asked for samples of whatever he wanted. His scam came to an end recently when he was arrested. I wonder, do you think I could get this guy to make me a fake ID card for Chick-fil-A? Dateline, is the customer always right? Last week, a woman shot up a KFC in Shelbyville, Kentucky. The reason? The employees failed to give her a fork and napkin with her meal. Here is the drive through window. While I acknowledge that utensils and napkins are important in that context, uh, since you know KFC meals can be rather greasy, let me suggest just walking into the KFC and telling them that they forgot to put them in the bag. Uh, chances are that the employees will apologize, and who knows, the manager might even give you a free food item or, or a coupon. That said, I'm glad none of the employees were hurt, and thank God the folks at KFC only forgot a fork and napkin. I mean, can you imagine if they forgot her chicken nuggets? Alrighty, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day. It's so nice, nice to feel So good about a meal So good about Kentucky Fried Chicken to feel so good about a meal.